All right, questions in 6.2. 6.2 is what we're going to do is we're going to use this uh, standard normal curve, and we're going to do some real applications. So 6.2, 6.2, we're going to do some real applications. So start out with just some, uh, some more problems. Number two is asking, it says uh, birth weights. It says, based on data set for births in Appendix B, birth weights are normally distributed with a mean of uh, 3152.0 grams and a standard deviation of 693.4 grams. So for the bell-shaped curve, what is the area to the curve? What's the area to the curve? One. It's always one, right? Remember, because it's a probability distribution curve, right? It's a bell-shaped curve. Then they ask, what's the median and what's the mode? So actually, let's talk about all of it. So what we have is we're going to have a uh, we have a bell-shaped curve here. So for number two, bell-shaped curve for for baby weights, and it says the mean is equal to three one five two point zero, and it's got a standard deviation of um, six hundred and ninety three grams. So in order to find in order to find this number right here, this is 3152.0 plus that standard deviation plus one of them, 693.4. And then this one right here would be this plus two standard deviations, right? And then you'd subtract off one standard deviation, you'd subtract off two standard deviations. Does that make sense? So remember, it's, it's the exact same idea as um, the standard normal curve is this was equal to zero, right? This was 0 plus 1. This is 0 plus 2, right? You take your original mean, you add one standard deviation. You take your original mean, you add two standard deviations. Or you subtract one standard deviation, or you subtract two standard deviations from the mean. So the idea is these two curves actually have the same shape. They have the same area. I use this curve to find the probability of this curve. This is essentially what we're using, OK? So the mean is going to be this number right in the center. So the first thing they ask is, what's the area of this curve? Remember, the area under this curve and the area under this curve are the same, aren't they? So they're both equal to 1. Yep, so A, it's equal to 1. B, it says, what is the median? Well, they only told us the mean, didn't they? But since this is a bell-shaped symmetric curve, that means the median is equal to the mean. Yep, so it's, it's um, 352.0 grams. What's the mode? It's the one that happens the most, right? What one happens the most? The mean. So 3152.0. So when we did uh, calculations in, uh, in, in the first chapter test, I'd ask you to find the mean, median, and mode, and those numbers weren't always the same, were they? But on a, on, a, on, a, on a normal distribution, those numbers are the same. That's why this is such a nice curve to work with. The mean, median, and mode are all the same numbers. Uh, the variance. Well, the variance is always what? Yeah, it's the standard deviation squared. So you're going to take that 693.4, and then you're going to grams, and then you're going to square that, OK? So remember that you're going to get grams squared here when you're done, just, just what, what it is. So 693.4 squared. Wow, it's a big number, 48048. 0.3.56 gram squared. Uh, number four asks random digits. It says uh, computers are commonly used to randomize to randomly generate digits on a telephone for, uh, of telephone numbers to be called when conducting a survey. Can the, the methods of this section be used to find the probability that when one digit is randomly generated, it is less than three? Why or why not? What is the probability of getting a digit less than three? Okay, so when we're doing when we're doing random, remember uh, I kind of came up with the idea. I, I kind of uh, use this idea a lot. Like if I roll a six-sided die, you guys agree the probability of any one of those numbers are the same. So when you have a probability distribution where the numbers are all the same, do you get a bell shape? No. Now what kind of shape do you get? Yeah, you get a uniform distribution, don't you? 
So the probability of a of a, a zero is the same as a is a one, the same as a two, same as a three, same as a four, same as a five, same as a six, same as a seven, same as an eight, same as a nine. Is that clear? Unfortunately, this is a discrete distribution, so I'm not even sure why this is in here. But um, so that means my my table is going to be off a little bit. So really, what we have here is I'm going to have to try to clean this up. Is each one of these things represent a box, don't they? Because this technically is a discrete probability distribution. Does that make sense? Okay. So this is going to be a box here, and it's going to be a box here. And these boxes are centered at their midpoint because um, you just have whole numbers. So we tend to use for the uh, for the for these boxes, you we tend to either use the boundaries or the midpoints, right? And when they're just integers, we use the midpoints. So the, 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 the distribution curve is the, is the top of this curve. This is this part right here. And they ask, you know, what's the probability of getting a digit less than three? Well, what numbers are less than three? Two, one. That's right. So really what you're doing is you're finding this area right here. Does that make sense? So this, you know, it's, it has a width of three and a height of, well, what is the height? What's, what's the probability that you, uh, that you get a one? One out of 10, right? So this, this height is going to be one out of 10, so 0 0.10, right? So one divided by 10 is give, gives us that number. And they're all going to be that same thing, right? Just like rolling a six out of die, the probability of rolling a two is one out of six, right? So this probability is going to be one out of 10. So what you do is you take the width and multiply it by the height. So its area is going to be equal to width times height. So this is going to be equal to 30%, right? Now, another way to do it in a probability distribution that was discrete is this would be the probability of 0 plus the probability of 1 plus the probability of 2, right? And each one of these things are 1 out of 10. Agreed? So this gives you 3 out of 10, which is equal to that 0 0.30. So the whole idea behind a, a continuous probability distribution is we use areas to find probabilities as, as, as opposed to adding them up in the discrete probabilities, right? But you get the same thing. Number nine. It says, uh, find the area of the shaded region. The graph depicts IQ scores of adults whose scores have a normal distribution with a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 15. So IQ scores are, um, are set by us. Like, the mean will always be 100, and the standard deviation will always be 15. It's something that we force. So even if we get better at taking the test, we're always still going to make the mean 100 and the standard deviation 15, okay? No matter how much uh, human uh, intelligence grows. All right, so, uh, and plus, we're not even sure if that, we're, the, that W scale is even a thing, so. All right, but we're going to do it anyway because it's cool. It's cool distributions. All right, so for number nine, what we're going to do is we're going to find this area here. So it wants us to find this X value where I have an area of 9918. I think before I do that, let's do say something from number five. Let's do like number five first and then I'll do number nine next. Because one goes one way and number nine goes the other way and it's kind of easier to go from X value to area than it is area to X value. So let's do number five first and I'll do number nine next. I'm not going to do exactly number five because it's part of your homework. I'm just going to make up a number. So something similar to five. So five asterisks. <laughs> so what I want to do is I want to find uh, the probability of being less than 125. That's pretty high. That's, that shouldn't be there. It should be farther over than that. Because this right here is 100. Do you guys agree? So I guess let's do, uh, let's, let's do 115 then because that, that, that looks pretty good. So what's the probability that you're less than 115? So what I'm looking for is I'm looking for the area to the left of that number right there. So I'm looking for this area to the left of this number, so I'm looking for this. So what, we, what we're going to do is we're going to take this thing and we're going to send it to the standard normal distribution. Because remember, the standard normal distribution is, uh, is given through this chart of z-scores, right? Does that make sense? How do you go from x values to z values? What's the formula? z is equal to? 
minus over sigma, right? Okay, so we're going to use this formula to do that. So our x value is 115. Our mean is a 100, right? And what's the standard deviation of IQs? 15. So what we're going to get is we're going to get 15 over 15, but this is going to spit out the number 1, isn't it? Does that make sense? So what's kind of interesting here is if you look at this, uh, if you look at this, uh, these numbers here are going to line up directly with these numbers here. So this will be zero, this will be one, this will be two, this will be negative one, this will be negative two. So these numbers represent the exact same thing. Well, they, their areas are the exact same thing. So the area to the left of, 15, of 115 is the exact same thing as the area to the left of the z equals one. So I take it from here to here. So it's kind of like a, it's kind of like your metric scale, metric system. You know, you can take anything in inches and turn it into centimeters, right? So so uh, this is kind of our common metric system, and this is the formula that we use to change. So what that means is that remember what probability means. Probability actually means the area, right? So when I say p, I'm talking about the red area, right? So the probability that x is less than 115 is the exact same thing as the probability that x is what? I'm sorry, that z is? Yeah, the probability that it's less than 115 is the exact same thing as the probability that z is less than 1, right? So that means now that I'm in z-scores, I can use my table here, right? So I'm looking for 1, so 1.00. Drop it down, I get uh, 8413. 0.8413. Okay, so let's talk about the path we take. What we first do is we take x value, we turn it into z-score, and then we turn it into an area, which happens to be a probability, right? The way we turn it from x to z-score is you say z is equal to x minus mu over sigma, and over here we use our table, right? In the next section, what we're going to do is we're going to be reversing these directions. Okay, so in the next question that you asked me, which is number nine, where I'm going to give you an area, you're going to go back to a z-score, and then you're going to go back to an x-score. You're still going to use the table, but remember with the table here, we, we went from, uh, we from z-score to area, but in the other way, we're going to go from area to z-score, so we're just reversing our direction. And the way we go from z-score to x-values, you're still going to use this formula, but I have to solve it for x as opposed to z. So in order to solve it for x, you multiply both things by sigma, right? So you'd get x minus mu. And then you'd have to add mu to the other side. So mu plus z times sigma is equal to x. So what we use is x is equal to mu plus z times sigma. So really what it is is it is just the previous formula. That previous formula is solved for x. All right. So number nine says that I have an area of... Uh, 9918 to the left. So number 9, I have an area to the left of... Zero point nine nine one eight. So that's my area. So what do I have to do with this area? Well, I have to first take this area and turn it into a what? Into a z-score. So let's do that. Let's take it turn it into a z-score. All right, so I'm looking for 9918. When they give us those funny numbers, it means that there's an exact number that there that, that's there. So 99918. 2.0. 2.40. 2.40. Thank you. So I, I'm having a hard time seeing it. I said it's time for new glasses. It really is. They're getting it's getting bad. So 2.40. So I have a 9918. So when I track that thing back to the z score, you guys agree that's 2.40? Okay. So that means that means this gives us a z score of 2.40. So that's our z score. After you find your z score, you're going to use x is equal to mu plus z times sigma. What's the mean? Yeah, because we're talking about IQ still, right? plus 2.40. What's the standard deviation of IQ? 15. 15, right? So those are going to be known numbers, just like there are known numbers up here, right? You already know your mean, you already know your standard deviation. So you just pop that into the calculator. Now, um, IQ are whole numbers, so you're, you might get a decimal here. But we're going to round it to the nearest whole number. 
I hit 136 on the nose. That was nice of them. But you don't, there's no decimal IQ scores. No, just the closest whole number is fine with me. Uh, unless they give us instructions to do it a different way. Uh, 21. Oh, good, good question. And then this one, this will probably be it. This 31 is even more interesting. Oh my God, that's so good too. Okay, well, we're gonna, we're gonna close out this hour just doing questions. So, um, 21. That's fine. An hour to do the next section will be easy. So it says, uh, U.S. Navy uh, requires that fighter pilots have a height between uh, 62 inches and 78 inches. They probably they have to fit in the plane, right? Mm -hmm. They have to be able to uh, touch all the controls. I'm making assumptions. I'm not exactly sure why, but that's kind of my best guess. Okay, so find the percentage of women meeting the height requirement. How many women are not qualified because they are too short or too tall? So, and then it says, if the Navy changes the height requirement so that women are eligible, except just the shortest 3% and the tallest 3%, what would the new height requirements, uh, what, what are the new height requirements for women? So, what we're going to do is, uh, part A is essentially doing, part A is essentially doing this. You know, you're given an area, you're going to find a, a probability, right? Part B, you're given a, uh, you're given a probability, you're going to have to go back and find an X score, okay? So this is kind of like doing A, and this is kind of like doing B, okay? So one goes one way, one goes backwards, okay? On a test, that's what I'm going to do as well, all right? You got this. So what I need to do is, um, what I need to do, let's get more comfortable. So what I need to do, this is, this is bad. I need a spot to put my legs. All right, whatever. So this is still uh, 6.2, but we're going to do number 21. So what we know is that uh, we need to find the mean heights of women. And it's given that right above here. So the mean height of women is 63.7 with a standard deviation of 2.9. This stuff changes throughout the years. So this is going to be the mean. And the standard deviation is equal to 2.9. So what it wants us to do is it wants us to figure out how many people are in between, you know, what's the probability that a woman is between 62 less than X, less than 78 inches. That's what we're looking for, right? That makes sense? So what I have to do is I have to turn these X values into what? Yeah, remember we go X to Z to area, right? That's, that's the technique that we use. Okay, so the way we go for, to X values, I'm going to have to do, uh, sorry, I'm going to have to do Z scores. I have to do Z of 62. I'm going to just scribble that out. It's just too ugly. So Z is 62, and I'm also going to do a Z of 78. Now I'm putting those in parentheses just so we know that this Z score is going to be the one for 62, and this Z score is going to be the one for um, 78. You don't have to put those numbers in there if you want, don't want to. You could just say Z equals Z equals. Is that clear? I don't care if you, if you do. So remember that Z scores are X minus mu over sigma. You guys agree? But what's the X value in this case? 62. What's the mean? Yeah, 63.7 divided by the standard deviation, which is 2.9. And then for this one, you're going to have 78 minus the mean all over 2.9. Now, be careful if you guys do this on your calculator. I like to do the numerator first and then the denominator second, okay? Just so I don't mess it up. Because if you just type it in, like, if you just type it in without parentheses, it'll get messed up. So... What I mean by that, if, if you go 62 minus 63.7 and then divide by 2.9, all you're doing is dividing the 63.7 by 2.9. You're not dividing the entire thing. So what you have to do is you have to put the numerator in parentheses. So second insert parenthesis, second insert parenthesis. And that'll give you the right answer. What I like to do is I like to go 62 minus 63.7, hit enter, and then go divide by 2.9, hit enter. It's just about the same amount of keystrokes. And you can see that I get the same number both times. Z scores are to the tenth place because that's what our that's what this table is, right? This table is to the tenth place. So round these to the tenth. So I'm going to uh, 0.59, negative 0.59, negative 0 0.59. Now if I do the same thing for this one, 78 minus 63.7, hit enter, and then divide by 2.9, hit enter, I get a uh, ooh, that's a big one. I get 4.93. That's way, that's, that's way up there, you guys agree? Remember, what, what do z-scores represent? Mm. 
No, I'm not there yet. So a z-score represents standard deviations, right? Does that make sense? That this is that this height is actually negative 0.59 standard deviations below the mean. This one represents 4.93 standard deviations above the mean. That's a lot of standard deviations. You guys agree? Yeah. Remember, usual values are between plus or minus two, right? That's way up there, isn't it? Okay. <laughs> yes. That, <laughs> right. Honestly, it's they, they would definitely be in the the tallest women's club if that was the case. I don't. There there's a thing I think it's in the book. Okay. So towering over me at 78 inches. Okay. So. Uh, <laughs> So that means, uh, kind of set this up, the probability of X being between uh, 62 and 78 is the exact same thing as the probability of Z being between what two numbers? Yep, those two numbers, minus 0.59 and 4.93. How do you do betweens? Yeah, you have to you have to have the big area first, which is going to be z less than um, z less than 4.93, and then I'm going to subtract the probability that z is less than negative 0 0.59. Right? Do you subtract the probabilities? Make sure that you guys subtract the probabilities and not the numbers. Okay? Don't subtract these things. You subtract the areas. Right? Does that make sense? I see people subtracting these things a lot. Don't subtract these numbers. Subtract the p's. Subtract the areas. So area first, subtract second. So let's find the area. So, well, I already know this one, right? Anything above 3.5 is 9999, right? So this is 0 0.9999 minus the probability of being less than negative 0.59. Well, negative 0.59 is going to be all the way over to here. My eyes are terrible. So I got 2776. You guys get that? Yep. Okay. 0 0.2776. Is that what it is? Thank you so much. Two, two, three. I like to say it's my glasses. I think I'm just getting old. It sucks. Oh well. So um. Next, part B is asking. It says, "Oh, let's." They they asked this something about this. How many women are not qualified then? Because they're either too short or too tall. Like, these are the qualified women, right? So, so what would you do to find not qualified? Is that clear? Yeah, just subtract it from one, okay? So the answer is going to be one minus that number. So, um, and they say about 28%, right? Is that clear? Okay. Um, Navy uh, uh, says that, uh, what if they change the requirements to be the bottom three to the top 3%? I'm going to have to have a new piece of paper and stuff like that. i got to make it. So, for part B... They're asking, um, what they want to do is they want to go from the top three to the bottom three. So this and this. So what I know is that the area inside here is going to be 0 0.03, and the area inside here is going to be 0 0.03. Does that, make, does that make sense? They only want to exclude the bottom three and the top 3%. So then what they want to know is we already know that this area then, what's the area in the middle then? Nine zero point nine four. Four. Okay. Why? Oh, <laughs> because that's six percent, right? Okay. Cool. All right. Good. So, all right. So instead of instead of only having like what seventy two percent before, they say, well, what if we can have it to ninety four percent? What do the x cutoffs have to be? Well, the way we have to do this is we're going to go from area to z score to x value, right? To go from area to z score, we're going to use the table. And to go from z squared to x, we're going to go x is equal to mu plus z times sigma. We just did this, right? Okay. All right, so what I want to do is I want to find, I'm going to find this x value, and I already know that that one's going to be the positive version of this because of that symmetry, right? So if I find this one, this will be negative, and this will be the positive of it. So looking for 0 0.03 or a number closest to it. All right, I finally have 0.3s. So what I usually do is I go down until I find 0 0.03, and then I go left and right until I find a good one. So I got 0 0.0301. I don't think I'm doing better than that. You guys agree? All right, I'm, I'm, I'm going to uh, 
I know the video is live, but I'm going to go around. I want you guys' fingers at it, okay? Show me it. I need the point zero. Can't even find it anymore. There you go. I'm looking for the point zero three zero one. Show me. So, um, it's just important that you guys can do this. So I want to make sure everybody can see it. Did you get it? Okay. Show me. I know. This is small. So, um, all right, so, <laughs> okay, where were we? Where were we? Okay, here we are. What's the z-score? So track it up and left, right? 1.88. Yeah, negative 1.88. So that means this gives me a z-score of negative 1.88, right? How do you find the x value? U plus z times sigma, right? So that goes right there. And remember that we knew the mean and standard deviation, right? The mean of women is what? 63.7. And then the, the oh, minus now, 1.88, right? Plus a negative, is that clear? Times what? What's the standard deviation? 2.9. 2.9. So pop that directly in your calculator. 63.7 minus um, 1.88 times 2.9. <coughs> so I get a, uh, I get, that's not, that's not a thing. Oh, yeah, I do, that, that makes sense. So I get 58.24. Does that make sense that this one right here is 58.24? That'd be 5, right? Two, yep, 2, 5. <laughs> Actually, we're going to go, yeah, that's one decimal past the given data, so 58.25. Now, we have to do the other one as well. We have to figure out this x value. Now, remember that, that heights are not centered at 0. Only z scores are centered at 0, right? Mm -hmm. So I knew that this z score was going to be negative. What's the other z score? Positive. Okay, so we're going to do the exact same thing, except that number is going to change to a positive. So um, x is going to be equal to 63.7 plus 1.88 times 2.9, and that's going to give us... Cool. 69.15 inches. inches. Is that clear? Okay, we're, we're, we're done. So uh, I'll give you guys a break. See you in five.